my name is Ketul Popat. Uh, I'm a professor in mechanical and biomedical engineering at Colorado State University. And one of the main research areas in my lab is on titanium nanotube arrays for biomedical applications. Uh, we have been working on titanium nanotube arrays for almost eight years now um, and we have done a lot of work especially trying to understand the biomedical aspect of these nanotube arrays and how they can be actually applied to biomedical devices. Now titanium nanotube arrays are not that unknown. Uh, the first time that these were actually made were in 70s. Uh, there have been a lot of application of these nanotube arrays, specifically in photocatalytic and semiconducting uh, um, areas. And so there's a wide range of applications specifically in energy to environmental areas. But the biomedical uh, applications of nanotube arrays have not been that uh, old it's much recent that these nanotubes have been used and one of the most fascinating thing about these nanotube arrays is their ability to be formed in different configurations specifically different sizes with different surface properties like you know very simple example uh, you can make these nanotube arrays where all the tubes are touching each other or you can make them such that these tubes are far apart from each other so from that aspect, I think, you know, uh, there's a lot of tunability for these nanotube arrays, and that's why they have a lot of potential for biomedical applications, especially in uh, case of implants and using them as interfaces for implants. Uh, we have worked quite a bit on sort of understanding how we can apply these to orthopedic implants, dental implants. Uh, one of the big problems with orthopedic and dental implants is the osteointegration part, how the bone attaches to the implant surface. And, you know, we believe that if we can provide surfaces that have these kind of nanotube arrays, uh, that would actually make uh, the integration process much more faster and also much more efficient. Um, so there's a lot of potential specifically for implants and interfaces of these implants. Uh, one other thing that we have been working on uh, quite a bit is basically uh, looking at how uh, these uh, nanotube arrays can be interfaced with vascular devices such as stents. And we're trying to understand that providing such a nanotopography, would that actually make these, uh, these, uh, these devices uh, prevent clotting or restenosis and things like that. For a moment, materials perspective you know these nanotube areas are very interesting because once you make them essentially what you're doing it you take titanium and you're growing oxide but the way this oxide ends up is basically in a nanotube format but depending on how you anneal this you can get different crystalline phases you can get anatase rutile brookite all these different phases and you know anatase phase is something that is very much interesting because this anatase phase is a conducting phase and a lot of cells they do actually need a surface that's conducting for them to be able to do their cellular phase processes um, so so these these nanotube areas have a lot of different uh, tunability they have many different ways in which we can actually tune their properties uh, and 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 you know I, I believe that in future I think we'll see these kind of nano structured surfaces um, and specifically for all these titanium based devices they can be applied uh, they can be uh, applied to um, and again you know as, as I said we have worked with these and we we do know for sure uh, for 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 sure that stem cells respond very differently when we give a surface that has this nanotopography. Uh, blood cells, specifically platelets and leukocytes and macrophages, also respond very differently uh, differently to these kind of surface. So from a future perspective, I think these nanotube arrays, they hold a great potential. Uh, one of the other biggest advantages in terms of commercializing these nanotube arrays would be uh, the fact that you can very easily uh, make these on any non-conformal three-dimensional uh, implant or any any surface uh, or, or any, any or any uh, implant uh, the process is very repeatable and that's one of the best things about these process and that's why from a commercialization perspective from a medical device perspective I think it should be very fairly easy to try to integrate these kind of nanotube arrays um, or nanotubes uh, surfaces on on existing implants um, and as I said one of the one of the main um, areas where this would be applicable uh, would be orthopedic implants, um, intraosseous transcutaneous amputation implants, and also uh, also dental implant. And also from a materials perspective, these nanotube arrays can be made into a variety of different um, 
types of titanium based alloys um, definitely pure titanium commercially pure titanium works but the standard alloys uh, you know ti6 al4v um, or any sort of titanium based alloys uh, there will be uh, they, they have the ability to uh, you know form these nanotubes on the surface